I don't think I've ever been in snow this deep. Literally further over there, the snow comes up to my waist. So I'm here in Northern Sweden and I'm staying at a very popular hotel. You may have seen the video, but what things can you do here? Well, it's nine in the morning. The sun has not yet risen. I'm gonna go and get some breakfast and then it's a busy day. I'm gonna try a snowmobile for the first time, horseback riding, and also turn my hand at some ice sculpting. Yeah, come on. So look how much snow is on that rock. <laughs> it's crazy. And before you moan at me, obviously I'm not wearing a hat just yet because breakfast is literally about a two minute walk from my apartment where I'm staying. Look at the sky. How beautiful is that? I bet I've got to take all this uh, snow gear off before I walk in here. Quick check on the temperature this morning. That's in Fahrenheit. It's basically minus 13 degrees. Yeah, I've got to get all this off. Wow, look at that. I think I'll sit here. Love how the fact they've created the northern lights in the ceiling. Got a smoothie there. Some orange juice, apple juice, sausage, meatballs, pancakes. Whipped cream for breakfast, yikes. Cold meats. And salmon for breakfast too. Got eggs, and scrambled eggs. Well, I've gone for a simple breakfast this morning. Mind you, people like vultures up there, like pushing people out of the way. And it was just like everyone trying to get their hands on their toaster as quick as they could. So I actually didn't really toast my toast very well because there was a big queue and it was almost like pressure. So I've gone for scrambled eggs, chicken sausages, a bit of cheese, and a nice cup of and a nice cup of coffee. Don't you hate it when someone's ring alarm goes off? Why is that ever so loud? Breakfast done. That was actually pretty nice. Such a cute little restaurant. You can have dinner in there, but it's a lot more expensive. Tonight I'm going to have dinner somewhere slightly cheaper, which is further up the road. But uh, my first activity of the day, before I try snowmobiling for the first time, is um, horse riding. I'll tell you what, I feel a little bit overdressed for horse riding. I'm here at the stables. We drove about 40 minutes into the wilderness. How am I supposed to get on a horse like this? I'm just in the stables. Just thought I'd show you this. Even goats get cold. He was outside, but he's come in to warm up. Or she. You're nice and warm there. My horse has got a little white dot on his head. So we just go and find our own horse then? No, I will come with you. I was going to say, yes. I have no idea what I'll be looking at. So my horse is called Fengu. Fengu, Fengu. Don't think it's going to come to me if I call it, will it? Fengu, Fengu. <laughs> so before we go horse riding, we've got to give him a brush clean their hooves. Where did you say Fengu was? Fengu this is the black one with the white spot on his nose. Ah, okay. Difficult to see because of the snow. This is my horse. It's more like a pony. Hey ho! Love the fringe. So I'm going to try and put this on you. Gotta watch out for the poo. Come on. Me and my horse. Whoa! <laughs> this is deep snow here. Pretty deep snow. I don't think we'll go this way. Let's go this way. He's like, I'm not walking in that deep snow. Are you crazy? I've only ridden a horse once, so this will be interesting. Watch out for the goat. Horse meets goat. Do we go in anyone? Uh, yeah, we'll take the next one. This one? Stand here, and he will turn around you. Okay. So we've got to brush the snow off the horses first. If I'm doing this right, there you go. I'm a professional, I've done this before. Does that feel good? Does that feel nice? And he's ready to go. You can just let your 
horses follow me, okay? Oh, where does it go? We'll follow this one over here. So it's very snowy today. So this was only my second time horse riding, but what an experience in the deep snow. Shortly followed by a three course lunch where we had soup, where I tried mousse for the first time and also a rather nice dessert. I bet I'm late for my ice sculpting. Sorry, I'm late. Just stand here? Okay. Two hands, one in the back, so don't accidentally slip or cut your hand or your neighbor or anything like that. <coughs> but nice to say, always two hands, always gloves, and not chop away too much on the ice block because then it might break loose, and I can't always repair if it's broken on the ground. Okay, so that wasn't really much of an explanation of how to ice sculpt. <laughs> Maybe she'll help us. We should go along. She's basically just shown us the chisels, and away we go. Thank you. I know I should be using both hands, but I'm just doing this with the camera. I have no idea what I'm doing. This ice is so easy though, to chisel. It's funny, everyone's just chiseling away, like they know what they're doing. <laughs> it's so easy though. I thought this actually was really hard, but this ice they say is so clean. Well, in the end, I decided to do a cat face. I don't know if you can see it that well, but there are the eyes, the nose, the whiskers, <laughs> and the mouth. I did try to do something arty here, but failed miserably. What are you going for? A head? That looks good. Yeah, maybe. What some other people have done. That looks like a turtle. I think someone was going for a heart there. I don't think I'll be good enough to do that. Well, I guess you've got to be into that. I found it a bit difficult really knowing what to do. It wasn't really much of a class. And I was surprised we weren't wearing goggles because I thought those shards of ice could end up in my eye. But I did a cat and that was the best I could do. Right, next activity. I've been wanting to do this all my life and that's snowmobiling. Never done it before. And I've paid that little extra to go on by myself. They said to wrap up well and they've given me two balaclavas, these humongous gloves. I've got about four or five layers on about three or four socks and thermal socks on. Hopefully I'll be good to go. It'll be interesting to see how I operate the camera with these gloves. Uh, my name is Lena and I'll be your guide for today. Uh, how are you feeling with the clothes? You good? <laughs> yeah? Are you too warm right now? No, no good. Good. No, good. good. Nice and toasty. No one is cold? Yeah, 18.2, so it's, so it's quite cold today. First, I want you to sign a disclaimer. If you end up in the water, you have to practice your meditation skills and breathe. <laughs> you know that. And relax. But hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> uh, the helmets are in, si in sizes extra small, small, medium, large and so on. So I had to go for an extra, extra large, just because I've got my hat on, not because I've got a humongous big head. I hope they don't give me any instructions because I can't hear anything with this helmet on. So I guess a snowmobile is kind of similar to a jet ski in a way. Hey, so here is my beast. Now this is electric steering as well as these are heated as well. So here we go. Let's. It's kicking out a lot of smoke. Just look at a rev. I just made it worse. Here we go. Look 
look at the landscape. It's absolutely beautiful. Checking out my rear view mirror. It's working all right. We're actually on a lake right now. This is crazy. Speed's going up. It almost feels like you're on water a little bit. Like the skis want to go where the grooves already are. Tell you what, I wish I had something on my forehead. It's absolutely freezing. So we're heading into the forest now. This looks amazing. I'm surprised the camera has not yet froze up. I think it's only a matter of time, but I've got my GoPro with me, so look at this. Amazing, the snow is so deep it looks like marshmallow. Are we going for a tunnel? Woo! So we're about to stop because the rest of the group are probably around about half a kilometre back there and there's a guy going to the toilet. <laughs> well, a quick stop to get some photos of this amazing scenery. It is just so quiet. The time right now is 2.17. And the sun's basically set. Listen how quiet that is. No one has stepped foot in this snow at all. Look how deep the snow is. Oh my God. Literally, I can't move. So we've just literally stopped. We're gonna go and get a fire set up in one of these cabins. Or maybe outside, I don't know. How beautiful it is up here, look. It's so quiet. Oh, okay, so she's gonna start a fire. So it sounds stupid, have you got a lighter? Uh, I have a... <laughs> I have both uh, a fire steel uh, and matches. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's 20, around 20. About 20 below zero. Not 20 um, below zero. <laughs> they can check. The fire is now lit. I love these little lodges. We'll go and have a look in one of them in a minute. Mind you, it's quite dark, so I don't know how much I'll be able to see. Yeah. Well, that's nice. And we've got some cinnamon rolls as well, warming nicely by the fire. And I think there's a pot of coffee going around. I usually boil the water and then, uh, like now, I put the coffee beans in and let it sink for a little bit. And then I will start pouring it through. There's a lot of discussion what's the right way, but uh, I do the right way. That's the. <laughs> so you don't you don't boil the water now. No. No. Me neither. Just let the grains sink. Yeah, that's the correct way. The one and only. Is there a filter in the pot or? Just... No. So usually you don't drink the last sip of coffee because you will be eating it. Yeah. No, so you don't put it in a filter. Thing. No. No. So you just pour the coffee and just let it sit. So going to the toilet is an interesting experience, or is it? Apparently in here, it's really warm. Look at that, there's a candle. The temperature in here compared to outside, look at that, it's 25 degrees in here. There's all these little candle holders. I should light them really, do my thing, hang on. <laughs> all right, well my intentions were good. It's not gonna work, is it? Oh, it's a portaloo with a candle right next to it. Solids in the 
solids in the back, liquids in the front. Okay. Oh look, there's more little candle holders here. And we're back. Wow, what an experience that was. Well, it's been a busy day, so it's time for food. Now the restaurant is around about a 20 minute walk up there and you have to make a reservation if you don't make a reservation where well, you won't get in. It's the slightly cheaper restaurant as well here. There is a restaurant over there, but that costs a lot more money. So I'm gonna go further down there and also show you what this area is like because a lot of people live here in some really cute little chalet bungalows. Let's go and check it out. So coming out of the Ice Hotel, it's a shame there's not a shuttle bus or something down here, but it is a nice walk along this road and you can see how people live here in northern Sweden. You know, it's crazy to think that it's this cold here until around about April, beginning of May. It's not unheard of for it to snow in August here, but it doesn't stick. I love, I love how every single house here has some kind of lamp in the window and it looks really cosy. They've got candles in the window. They really do embrace living in this winter landscape. And actually, they celebrate Christmas pretty much all January. They've got their Christmas decorations, or well, actually Christmas lights up, unless they have them up all winter, I don't know. More little lamps in the window. How cozy is that? Look at that. I kind of just want to knock on the door and ask if I can come in. <laughs> so they've got a co-op here it's not the same brand as they have in the UK let's go and have a look inside their co-op what have they got now I do know they don't sell alcohol here you have to go to a special liquor store like you would in America hope the camera doesn't steam up when I go in I'll tell you what, they do love their dime bars. They have that in chocolate and biscuits and absolutely everything. Oh, you can get some Swedish hobnobs. Swedish snacks. Interesting. They look good. See, no alcohol. All this is alcohol free. There you go. That's what a co-op looks like here in Northern Sweden. Look at the icicles. They are some huge icicles. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. There's a whole load of snow dumped on the side of the road. Seriously, the snow here is so deep. It goes up to my waist in places if it hasn't been cleared away. So a lot of the houses in Sweden, they're either yellow or red, quite bright colors. And I do like this house. I walked past here last night with the boat in the yard. All the lamps in the windows again. It does look so pretty. The snow drifts in that garden are as high as the windows. All these houses, of course, are lakefront in the summer. At the moment, obviously the lake is over there and it's completely frozen over. It's also got a foot of snow on it. And I decided to walk back from the, the restaurant last night and walk back on the lake. And honestly, I had to give up because the snow was just so deep. And another interesting fact, being this far north in the Arctic Circle, the air is quite dry. It's really low humidity so they don't get too much of a frost here. So we're coming up to the restaurant, which is just here. If you go further down there, there's a, an old church, which I'll show you in just a little bit, but the restaurant is lit by candlelight. Look at that. All right, let's go. The snow gets so deep here that people have to go up on the roofs and actually take the snow off because it gets so deep that actually it could cause problems on the roof. A lot of these have got a high pitch, so it's not supposed to, but it can do. I just love that sound of snow. So here is the restaurant. Look, they've got lit flames outside. Very nice. The only problem is you have to take all this off. 
and strip down, otherwise you'll be too hot. Oh yeah, I've got a table for six o'clock. This is so cute. Thank you. So they've got a roaring log fire in here as well. So cosy, look at this candle. But shame I'm here on my own though. Last night I sat by the window overlooking the snow drifts. Now because it costs so much money to stay in the ice hotel, this is definitely the cheaper option for food compared to the restaurant where I had breakfast. Complimentary water, complimentary bread, although these aren't bread, it's cracker things. So it's pretty basic, you've got a starter's main and a dessert, but the main consists of a Caesar salad, a burger or pizza. I think I'm going to go for a burger, which is 219 Swedish kronos. Lovely. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. You. Love the little basket. The sauces are almost as big as the burger. I need to get these off the plate, really, and just get the chips on there. The standard beef burger, can't go wrong. The fries are very similar to McDonald's fries, but with a bit more crunch. And for dessert, I've gone for waffles with cream. Don't be picky, but the waffles are on the, on the thin side, and the cream looks from a can. Well, dinner was all right. That cost me twenty-five pounds for dinner at the homestead. That was for uh, a main meal and dessert. Not bad. I hope you like this video. If you fancy seeing my stay at the Ice Hotel, click the video here. If you want to see how I got here, click the video here. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. I'll see you next time.